Hello, folks. This is Jeff Davis with the legendary Jeff Davis Show from Central Texas, USA. And I love my cans and archives. Peace out, Hello, baby. Austin, Texas. We are back. And we have another exciting edition of the Jeff Davis Show. And um, I want to just mention, we're going to play that lead in again in case if you all missed part of it. Uh, there was a lot of work put into that. So we're going to go ahead and... Uh, play that here uh, either in midway through the show the end of the show whatever now we've got an exciting sh another exciting show for you lined up tonight we've got uh, scheduled to come in we have mr. Charlie Waits uh, local talk sh uh, talk radio personality and uh, a couple of things going on we got some stuff uh, that uh, concerning Mount Carmel it burned down uh, the little shed that the people were living in. Uh, but before we get to that, we've got a young lady in the studio with us from, now correct me if I'm wrong, it's, her name is Mary Helen Parent. That's the American way to, to put it, right? Yes. And she is what's, what's called a Raelian priest. Miss Parent, I'd like to first off welcome you Thank to the you. Jeff Davis Show. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you here. Um, I know you all got a little presentation you want to get to here, and you've got this this painting back here. Uh, Donna, Donna, you Donna, did this. Donna Grebo, which is the artist, and she's a Raelian here in Austin, and she took care of the of the chapter in in Austin. So we have a little bit different background, at least for the first segment of this program tonight. And my allergies are killing me, so I'm going to try to muster through this. Okay, uh, Miss Parent, or may I call you Mary, yes, Helen. Mary Helen? Mary Helen. Okay. Please do. Tell us a little bit about what 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 is a Raelian priest and what is the Raelian movement all about. Well, the Raelian movement comes from the word Rael, and Rael is the the person who met an extraterrestrial in 1973, uh, six days in a row, and um, he explained to Rael that how they came here 25,000 years ago and they created everything that there is on earth right now. They created all life, they created human beings scientifically through DNA. So they're the one and there, if you look in the original Bible in Hebrew, you can find the word Elohim. And Elohim means those who came from the sky. It's a plural. And in the current Bible that we have, it has been translated by a singular word, God which is completely different that, that the word Elohim means because the singular of Elohim is Eloha. So they're the one who came here and they created us on their image, on their likeness, like it's written. And it's their image, their likeness means that, you know, they're more than one. And if we are like them, they like us, so they're a human being like us that created us. Okay. <coughs> now, folks, I want to just mention that I've studied the Bible rather in depth myself and I don't I, 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 I can tell you that I'm not going to agree with everything you say here but I can also tell you that I'm not going to agree with ever, with most of the things that organized religion says because as far as I'm concerned that that's the, one of the biggest rackets going so keeping my views aside here um, what how did you first get involved in, in this it was in 1978. I, um, I, what happened? I found the book, Rael's book in French, and uh, I read it in one afternoon, and uh, that was it. For me, it answer, and in the same time, create new questions in my head. And uh, it makes so much sense, because everything can be explained that we can understand. There is no such thing as miracle or mystery. It's just a gap in civilization. But if you have enough scientific knowledge, everything can be understood. Even miracles that we think they are, they're not. It's just that we cannot understand it. So what, what is the Raelian movement then? Uh, what are you trying to accomplish? Well, there is, we have two goals. And the primary goal is to spread the message that you have in this book everywhere on the planet and so far we we're doing very well because there is over 35,000 members on all the continents and we are uh, in many many countries o over 85 countries and the book has been translated in about 25 languages so far and uh, then in order to build an embassy 
in Jerusalem or near Jerusalem. That's what the Elohim asked Israel to do. And this amb embassy is the third temple that the Jewish people are waiting for to build. That's going to be an embassy where there is extraterritoriality, where the Elohim can come officially, come back with all the prophets, like every great prophet, it says in their religion that they're going to come back. And they will, but like in flesh, like, like you and me, they're going to come back with the Elohim, and, and then they will be able to give us their, um, their knowledge, scientific knowledge, their wisdom, and help us to, to grow out of this epoch, which is uh, chaos, and get into the Golden Age. And before they come, then we have to make sure that we have this embassy, and then to have a little bit more love between each other, because if they don't want, they won't come if it's people don't accept each other for what they are. Okay, we had talked just briefly before the program started, uh, Mary, Marie Ellen, right? Marie Ellen. I'm sorry. <laughs> and um, we had talked about this. The, you hear we heard on our lead in there about this what uh, some of the one of some of the leaders and some of the the phrase of the world is a new world order mm -hmm. now I had come to it was mentioned to me that you all or at least you had stated on Joyce Isaac's show today I don't know maybe this is I didn't get a chance to hear because mm -hmm. of my, my schedule but that you all are, are uh, on the surface support this new world order not the one that they're talking about because I, uh, we, I, I don't support people who want to rule the world just to have power. That's, that, and that's that the one that we're in right now. Yeah, but that has okay. nothing to do okay. with that. We want a world language uh, that everybody can communicate together, but everybody will keep their own identity and their own language. But to have one language that we can all communicate together, uh, that would be very good. And I think it's probably it's going to be English because so far, that's what it's more spread out in, in the world is English. So it's going to be probably the world, the world language for everybody. But everybody will keep their own culture, their own differences, because that's what it's all about. It's to, to be able to, to, to be what you are in your own culture and appreciate the differences of others. And the, the world, the, the world um, government will be uh, one representative of every country will be in that council to make decisions so the world can be uh, a peaceful place to live in, but nothing to, it will be a humanita humanitarian uh, action, not something that people would like to take over and take charge and, and, uh, and like bankers will, would like to rule the world. It has nothing to do with that at all. Well, I think that the, the any time though where you get a situation where there's a, where there's a, um, where there's a concentration of power, whether it be the current rulers or future rulers, mm -hmm. you're, you're, going to, you're, you're going to have that potential. It depends on. That's the why I, I yeah. would. That's that's why I kind of am against this whole movement toward yes. any in any shape or fashion because it, you know, power corrupts. Uh, you know, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Yeah, I don't think they're going to have absolute power. So there would be a checks and balance. Okay, yes. but let's get more back into where I just yeah. wanted to bring that up because that was brought up to me and I thought, what? Yeah, so, I had to, so I had to clarify uh, da, 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 da. Yes. <laughs> because I can tell you that the face of this new world order that the, that the, that the, po the uh -huh. world's populace is facing now is not pretty. No, no, I agree with you. Unless you want, you know, unless you're, you know, a real good slave, and you know, you uh -huh, want to be, want to be uh -huh. led around like a bunch of cattle and all of that. Yeah, we want that. We don't want that. But. Um, so, first off, where are you from? Where I'm from Montreal, but I live in Miami now. It's too cold in Montreal, and I come here, and it's freezing. <laughs> it was so nice in Miami. It was very, very warm. Do you have an occupation? or? Yes, because everybody in the movement, uh, in the Redian movement, are volunteers. Nobody's paid to do. Uh, we do it on our own time and, and money and whatever. So everybody has a job, and, and uh, we are very uh, um, in the society. We're not like a commune and live apart. We are involved in the society with the people, and uh, everybody does what they want, to, you know, what they like to do to, to earn their living. Now, before we get, I know you all got a presentation here we're going to get to in just a minute here. But before we get to that, what, what, is, what mostly do you want to say 
to, to the to the viewers of this program. What do you want to say about you, you? I guess what you're trying to accomplish, or what 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 do you what do you specifically want to say to people the, on the, on this particular on the on the as a Raelian priest? That's R A E L I A N. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. What do you want to say to the viewers? Well, I can say a lot. It, 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 to to make a brief summary. These messages are the most important for humanity. And uh, when the Elohim, when they met Rael, they met him so he can give their message to humanity. And it's it's about, um, you want me to talk? There, no, right? you look at the camera. There. <laughs> There's a, see the monitor right there. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. No, that's all right. You I can like, talk like to, to me. If you, okay, like go ahead. Then you can look at me. Yes, yes, yes. It's, it's, I, I feel good to look at you. Okay. And well, you're not too bad to look at yourself. <laughs> well, go ahead. And it's, that's going to change the whole world. Because right now we are in chaos. Because we are like, humanity is like a, a biological entity that we were born as babies and we're growing up. And, and like now we're about like teenagers in crisis. And, and, and uh, if we want to pass, to get older as a humanity and to go in golden age, we need more wisdom. Because now we have a lot of scientific knowledge for our young age, but we're still babies, you know, playing with fire. It's very dangerous. We need to have more wisdom. And those messages are wisdom. To, uh, it's, it's pure consciousness to, to really awaken the consciousness of, of humanity. So we can get in that paradise like the, Elo the Elohim live in, because the Elohim went through the same path that we're going through, because they, they had progression in their evolution, in their, uh, in their humanity too. They were babies, teenagers, now they're, they live in paradise. And we can do that too. And with those messages are tools, meditation, how to, to love each other more, how to love yourself more. It's, it's all in there. So what I can do is that I wish to everybody, it's a gift. It's a gift from space that we can use to make this world a better world. That's, that's what we want to do. I also have to mention too that some of my study, uh, Mary Ellen, would, would, uh, Marie Ellen, right? Marie Ellen, would appear that, that this is probably delving into a little bit of new age. Are you familiar with the new age? Mm -hmm. You know, when yeah. you're, uh, but, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm just, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to, say that I'm just going I'm just bringing these this up mm -hmm. like because I've already mentioned to you that that organized religion to me is, a, is one of the biggest rackets I call it the obey Caesar churches because basically all they do is tell you to you know to to bow down to the current rulers that's mm -hmm. largely their philosophy so uh, but when you start talking about meditation and some of these mm -hmm. other things uh, are, you, are you referring to Maybe a minor type of yoga, or what do you? Well, the the, the techniques that uh, the Elohim taught to Rael, it's called sensual meditation, and the sensual meditation is the awakening of the body for the awakening of the mind, because everything you have in your mind came through your senses, all your knowledge, all your thoughts. It's because you heard it, or you saw it, or you tasted it, or you touched it, you felt it. That's why you have that knowledge in your mind. But if you would have an, no senses, your mind will be blank. So it means that it comes from the, all you have there comes through those uh, receptors of, of what surrounds you. So if you awake them, refine them, you will automatically refine and awake your brain, your intelligence, your, your, your harmony, your consciousness. So that's what the central meditation is all about. It's to let the place that surrounds you to give you pleasure. That's what sensuality is all about. Uh, and when I say sensuality, I'm not saying necessarily sexuality. I, it's two different things. You can be sensual in your sexuality, but you can be sensual when you eat a good meal, when you talk with somebody, when you look at the sun, when you look at a tree, just to feel more the infinity that surrounds you and the infinity that is in you. That's what meditation is all about. It means practice. Meditation comes from meditary which means practice. It's to practice. And the sensual meditation is to practice your senses, to develop them, to feel more. Do you have any... So you, you, you definitely then are of the idea that... See, I've had people on my program that talk about Pleiadians. Are you, have you done any... Did, uh, 
well, just to get into the grays and the mm -hmm. uh, Palladians and all the, all the, the different extraterrestrials yeah. that are supposedly f or flying around all over, which, mm -hmm. just between you and me, I don't believe most of it. Mm -hmm. I do believe that there's anti-gravity aircraft, but I believe it's, again, coming from our rulers. Mm -hmm. but but do you so do you but do you believe then that there is a, a there is an infinity of humanity in universe because the universe is infinite so there is an infinity and and it, and indefinitely small and indefinitely large there is, it's it's incredible but on this planet which is ours uh, the Elohim are the only one who come here or if they would allow somebody else to come, they would have to, uh, the other one would have to have the permission of the Elohim to come here. Because we are their civilization in a way, because they created us. So they're they kind of protecting us. But in a way, they don't really need to protect us, because there is a law. There is a cut. This is very important. So you can't take away all the fears of the unknown who lives somewhere else very far. There is a cosmic law that says that as soon as you're capable scientifically to get out of your solar system, you're automatically peaceful. Because if you're not, if you're not peaceful, suppose take as an example ourself. We're not very peaceful yet, but we have a lot of knowledge and soon we'll be capable to get out of our solar system. We didn't yet. But before we can go outside of our solar system, if we don't get wiser, we will destroy ourselves. So we're not... Um, we're not, um, um, we cannot hurt other civilization in the universe. Because if we're aggressive, we're going to kill ourselves, destroy ourselves before we can go outside. So the extraterrestrials who come here, they're automatically peaceful. Because they, if they have the technology they have, which is very, very high, means that they're not aggressive anymore because they wouldn't exist. They would have destroyed themselves. So we don't have to be scared like all the movies that they show to us to scare people. I'm wondering how much of those movies are not a uh, kind of con conspiracy from people to make sure that people are scared so they can, they can um, uh, y uh, manipulate them better, you see? Uh, it's, it's, it's a question to see uh, who are behind all those movies to scare people off so they can you know, be in power more of those people who are scared. We don't need to fear anything at all because those bad people, if they are bad, they probably have, I'm sure there is bad people who live on another planet, but they can't come here. They can't. Let me, let's get it, if we could, this is a, I don't understand much of it, uh, like, but anyway, this, this, these, Donna made this paint, or yes, designed this Donna, paint here, and yeah. I think it needs at least be shown on uh do you do you actually want to come up here and explain yes, any of this and then we'll get yeah. to your other little yes. presentation okay. here you have okay yeah. that uh, looks like a lot of work if you ask me okay your mic's on Go ahead. it looks like a lot of work to me if you but that's oh, just thank you but i did it in let, um, let me get up on out of your way here from, <laughs> go ahead you can stay here Mary. Yeah. do you want to just stand up here or do you want to I'll stand to the side. And then you can go ahead and do your other presentation, too. Oh, okay. Let me get this out of your way here. Go ahead. I'll, right. I'll be back in the back. <laughs> I wanted to uh, have a concept that showed one world making contact with another world, the parent and the, uh, the, the child world. Because, um, and I have a DNA strand that transforms into the bridge. Down on the bottom, I uh, have the, uh, some major religions. And this bridge ties the religions together and ties us to our creators. And then I have welcome our scientific creators from space. And uh, so I also have a uh, presentation of a kind of a the brochure that we pass out. I'll help you. Okay. You are, in, you are in your cord. Sorry? Okay, here we go. What you watch? I'll read from the brochure, and Mary Helen will hold up the drawings. 
In a time when space travel, genetics, and electronics have caused a real revolution, the people of today are technologically in the future, but philosophically in a distant past. Men and women of the philosophy adapted to the technological progress of their era. The belief of guilt and their genuflection and contrition is now obsolete, as are devils and benign deities who assume the right to control others. By making people unaware of the consequences of their actions and by favoring that which is most destabilizing, suffering. Today we want a spiritual life which enhances wisdom and pleasure, improves our consciousness, and allows us to feel connected to ourselves, to all other human beings, to all living things, and to the infinite universe. This kind of spirituality does exist. It is Raelianism. People have lost the real meaning of religiosity. Religion, from the Latin, means to connect. To be religious does not mean reciting traditional prayers that we do not understand. It means feeling connected to ourselves and to the infinity which surrounds us. André Malraux said, the third millennium will be religious or it will not be, and it is. Raelianism is a atheist religion premised on the fundamental concept the human being. We do not need those religions that legitimize their values from divine rights, thus penalizing those who do not share their convictions. We want a re universal religion that draws uh, its legitimacy from values premised on human rights, and that is Raelian religion. The common dom denominator of all people is their desire to be happy and to live in a harmonious and peaceful world. So we need values which contribute to the blossoming of every person and which cultivate human idiosyncrasies in order to replace archaic values whose only function is to maintain traditions. Raelianism means living out humanistic values daily. It means loving yourself unconditionally in order to love others better. It means feeling responsible for our actions even when following orders. It means having absolute re respect for life because whoever saves the life of a nonviolent person saves the world. Being Raelian means campaigning for a peaceful planet without national armies but with a worldwide army of peacemakers. This way, the national military budgets can be used to fight hunger throughout the world. And everyone has the right throughout their lifetime to have enough food, a place to sleep, some clothes, and access to education, as no noted in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And there's not a single country that gives the application of these articles of paramount importance priority over the arms race. We Raelians denounce this false position. To mean Raelian also means be going beyond tolerance by putting forth a concept which would guarantee peace among all people, love of differences, not a mere acceptance, but a genuine culture of sexual, racial, religious, and other diversities. The Raelians develop this new philosophy by meeting regularly particularly during a awakening seminar, which are held on each continent. There are many hundreds of individuals are taught a philosophy centered on personal growth and meditation. Now it is proven scientifically that meditation fosters the development of our physiological and psychological potential of which we are only 10%. Raelians practice sensual meditation this word means training in the pleasure of the senses. This meditation permits us to increase the quality of the information that the senses transmit to the brain and gradually manage that information completely. Sensual meditation allows us to develop our capacity to harmonize ourselves with the infinity which is part of us and which surrounds us. The teachings given during these seminars also bring back the importance of pleasure to the life of each individual. They are the last straw for all the anti-pleasure institutions who have broken millions of people seeking a better existence. Isn't happiness the pleasure you feel at every moment? The Raelian um, 
revolution challenged existing dogmas. Our educators taught us that life on earth is the result of many strokes of good luck or the fruit of the whims of a divine being. These two theories have never been pr proven, leaving up in the air all existential questions that all people ask themselves. Where do we come from? Why are we here? Where are we going? The Raelian religion brings a rational and revolutionary answers to these questions. And today we realize that we are not alone in the universe. We are traveling in space. We are discovering the mechanisms of life through genetic engineering. And now we are capable of understanding that in December 1973, a journalist named Rael met several times with a representative of an extraterrestrial civilization who told him, we created humankind. Your ancestor has deified us. We are the origin of all religions on earth. And these people from space created humankind in their image thousands of years ago, thanks to the mastery of genetic material deoxyribonucleic acid, DNA, find traces of their enormous feats in the ancient texts of many civilizations, such as the original Bible, where they are called Elohim, an ancient word meaning those who come from the sky. They initiated all the great prophets, like Buddha, Moses, Mohammed, Jesus, by giving them a message adapted to the level of consciousness of the people of their time, in order to guide humanity to the age of revelation which we have reached since 1945. Now, in the light of our scientific progress, we can understand who they are without mystifying. The Elohim wish to come back to Earth officially to meet with the w leaders of our government in an embassy acknowledged by the United Nations. And they asked Rael to send up the International Raelia Movement and bring this message to knowledge to all humanity. And this message is in the book called The Message Given to Me by Extraterrestrials. And the messages are here to prepare humanity for the welcoming of the Elohim when they return to the temple that we will build for them soon in the future. And here's the model of the uh, embassy. The replica. Mm -hmm. It's like um, a crop circle that uh, we saw in, in land. One of them was the blueprint of, uh, of the embassy that has to be built for the Elohim. All right, sorry to interrupt here. Stay tuned right here on these channels for more classics from Mike Hansen Archives. But I just want to take a moment to ask for your help to fund these channels. We are asking a $25 donation to buy my book. Uh, I wrote this book about Bohemia Grove, about when Alex Jones and I snuck in to the Bohemia Grove Club. And it tells all about it. Uh, Tex Mars forwarded it. He just recently passed away, so it's becoming a real collector's item. Alex has his own chapter in this book, and it's very good, full of pictures and all sorts of things. You know, George W. Bush and his father was a member of the... Uh, Bohemian Club and Junior still is but it's a really good thick book and we'd appreciate a $25 donation sent to and we also I will definitely sign it and send it right back to you uh, if you want to call us at 830-672-3089 672-3089 that's my office just leave your name and phone number and the secretary will call you back and uh, you can pay with a credit card and uh, if you want to write us our phone number I mean our address is 901 
St. Joseph Street, Gonzales, Texas, 78629. Once again, send that $25 for this book right here, Bohemia Grove, Cult of Conspiracy. Uh, I wrote that book, forwarded it by Tex Mars. Alex Jones has a chapter in it and a lot of other people. So we appreciate, stay tuned to uh, these local YouTube channels and Facebook and Instagram and I'm on Twitter now too. So uh, stay tuned for Mike Hansen archives and all the classics. Most of these tapes are 25 years old or, or a little bit younger. Alrighty, thanks a lot and God bless. Please support us when you can, where you can. Here's the address one more time and the phone number, and we'll get right back to your uh, viewing of these classics. Uh, be sure to go to Mike Hansen Archives, Hansen Archives, and our new one, Waco Archives. Thanks a lot and God bless. I love Mike Hansen Archives. Yeah! You're ready to run. So those uh, painting, Donna did all of them, so she's a very talented woman. <laughs> well, I try. It's kind of <laughs> like my way of, I have so much inside me I want to say, and... Yeah. Y'all got some cards. Can you take them real quick? Sure. Okay. Because well, they've been on hold forever. Okay. Yes. Go ahead. You want to, you want to show that? Okay, we have some callers on the home. Hello. We'll go ahead and take them now, whenever you all. Hello? Yes, sir. Well, Jeff, I, let me tell you, usually, you know, you have Galen Ross on, ex-National Security Administration. Now, hold on, I'm going to turn on the television. Okay. Can you put it louder? Yeah, yeah Jeff. Yes, sir. All I was going to say is this, uh, you know, Jeff's got a great show. He's had people on, like Galen Ross, who's been, a, who's been an international consultant for, uh, for large oil companies, and, uh, and he's, he, I've, seen his, I've seen his credentials. I've read about him in other books. Uh, he works for the National Security Administration. Jeff has a lot of great facts on his show. But I, gotta, uh, but I tell you, ladies, uh, I think all this stuff that you're into is nothing but a large diversion. And I can also tell that Jeff uh, isn't too deep into this. And I, I, I mean, I agree with Jeff. I think this is pretty nebulous, and I don't think it's on target. I think it's a diversion. And uh, Jeff, I think you got a good show. I would just hope that I would just hope that you would not agree with this behavior because mixing this in with your successful movement and the Patriot Front that we're trying to start up in this area, I think this could really. Uh, uh, I mean, I know that you like to have a forum for people to come out and you know have free speech. And I understand that you don't agree with a lot of stuff you have on. But uh, I don't know, ladies. I've, I've, I've been watching, and it sounds to me it's just like some kind of recycled stuff, uh, you know, some kind of Hinduism for the Western world. And I don't agree with it. Uh, I'm sure there are, you know, I mean, I mean, the Hubble Space Telescope has categorized 500 billion uh, galaxies uh, just since it's been up the last few years and since it's been fixed. So I would agree there's probably life all over space. But I think this is all diversion. We need to worry about the tax bracket. The, uh, the uh, police powers, the thumb scanning, the microchips, all this is real. This is all well known. And, and uh, Jeff, I saw your intro at the first. I enjoyed seeing that uh, on your intro it showed one of the thumb scanners that are being installed in all major uh, states now. And uh, I was watching C-SPAN the other day. For people's information out there, there is it's called the National Surveillance System. And it's, it's a $400 huh? uh, million dollar building. Just the equipment costs $400 million. Let, him, let, me, let, him, let me interrupt you for a minute. I'm all right now. You've stated that you're against this uh -huh. enslaving system yeah. that the current yeah. regime has. Sure. Yeah, I, d I don't know what is this question. If okay. He has a question. Do you have a question or comment? Well, my question is this. You know, uh, I'll start listening to you, and you can bring an alien on TV and show me one. And uh, you know, I just 
I mean, I mean, this stuff may be real, but it doesn't matter. There's so much factual stuff that's so damn strange that's happening in this country now, and there's so much incredible BS, folks. We got that right here in Texas. You go down, you'll be, you'll be computer scanned, your thumb, and uh, I mean, you're not a criminal, but it's being done to you to get a driver's license or renew your driver's license. And they have built a national grid. It's supposed to be up by 1998. They've got the giant computer system. It's in. Uh, it's in Langley, Virginia, right next door to the CIA. So that's all real. All I'm saying, and all I'm asking this lady is, is, hey, uh, you know, I think that, you know, you shouldn't come out against the globalists and the New World Order. And I just, I was just watching C-SPAN and saw Gorbachev on there earlier today at some big conference, some big global conference. So this is all real. But your alien stuff, I'd like to see you back it up with some, I mean, with some fact right in my face until I start believing it. And please, Jeff, don't mix this in with the movement. I know you probably don't agree with it. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, I'm going to go, go ahead and let you respond. Well, there's no, you didn't ask any question. So, um, what he says, it's his own belief, and I respect that. So, if it's what he believes, that's fine. Let me ask you, do you, you travel around and go on different shows and whatnot? Or? Yes, and we give a lot of lecture in university and everywhere in the con around the world. And, um, and you have a lot of people doubting it? what you're saying? Or? Yes, but it's okay. We're yeah. not here to convince anybody. We're just here to, to give the information that was given to Rael for all humanity. There is people are, who are ready to take it, there is people who are not, and it's fine. Uh, if, if somebody is Catholic or Baptist or uh, Jewish and he's happy, that's fine. See, yeah. my, my situation is as a talk show host. Yes. I th you know, I, I, I'm just trying to, to do in fact, I don't think that there's anybody that I've had on my program that I agree with 100%. Mm -hmm, not mm -hmm. one, not one person. Yes. Okay, so I, I think just as just as, as a uh, as a talk show host, I think that I don't see anything wrong with having people that I don't have to agree with on every everything. I think, but I think that obviously there's something. You all think this is something, mm -hmm. and I, Actually, I think you should have the the right to be able to express your own. This is very important. Some, for some people, it looks so foreign that they don't see it because it comes from some, somewhere else on another planet. But this is about us. This is where we come from. This is answering all the big question: Why, when, who, where. This is answering everything. And, and it's all the question we have about ourselves for years. Where do we come from? Where are we going? And I think it's not something that doesn't uh, uh, in, in involve ourselves. It involves us because it's all about us. And he might not talk about all what that gentleman talk about uh, pricelessly, but doesn't mean it's not as important as what he's talking about. It might be more important, but it's not because he doesn't see it that it's not important. It's not because nobody sees the truth that it's not there. I think what he was referring to is like I, I frequently have like congressional bills that are that I think are just designed nothing more to put more laws on us make us more slaves mm -hmm. and you can slap that bill up on a camera and mm -hmm. show read people where they're trying yeah. to, they're, they're trying to do this or do that or make hate crimes or whatever they're trying to whereas what I guess what he's saying maybe is that since 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 there hasn't been an alien or anything like this that's you know, that's been thrown in front of us. Well, then at masochists, do you think they're going to come here? Well. Hey, we got four cars. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, uh, they, they don't want to be killed. We're not, we're not, we don't have enough respect for differences. And one more time, we're too I want to make, make it clear, Mary Ellen, that you absolutely agree, you absolutely are totally against this current brand of world government. Of course. Of okay, course, the because what we're talking about in the book about world government has nothing to do with what's going on now, because what, what, what's going on now, it's a power trip. Right. And that has nothing to do at all. Okay. So I... Okay, next caller, you're on the air. Hi, how's it going? Good, you? All right. Um, now, the, the word Elohim is, where do you get that from? It's a Hebrew word, which means those who came from the sky. And you where, you where does that come from? Uh, if you look in all the original Bible in Hebrew, and there is few Bible in, in English that kept the word Elohim, but very few. The, it has been all mistranslated by the word God, singular. Uh-huh. And then you're saying it's a plural, which is yes. a terrestrial. You can find it in the, in the dictionary. 
Well, yeah. um, and and the other thing is, uh, I've I've seen some of your material playing, and um, what uh, what is the uh, relationship between the Elohim? Uh, isn't there some political division in the in the on the home world or something where, with regard to the experiment that's going on here? Uh, regarding the genetic manipulation and such, wasn't there uh, in in your doctrine and your in your material? Isn't there something that explains a political um, disagreement between the, the the basically the founders of this project and 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 uh, some of the other on their planet? You mean yes. Okay. Yes. Um, because when they came here, created uh, everything on this planet, uh, some people on their planet agreed with it, and others were not. Because when we have been created, there was a group that said that uh, this creation is not good; they're too aggressive, and, and uh, it's 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 a bad bad uh, s experience that we did. But the people who were here and created us really d the took their defense and they wanted to to protect us and that's what they did when they, they, they destroy everything on the planet Noah's Ark was um, was a space shuttle that kept all the cells of every uh, cr uh, species that were created and they preserved it up there from the, the ones that weren't contaminated with extraterrestrial with extraterrestrial semen or whatever right the extraterrestrial gene pool became mixed with the the the, the planned project gene pool, and that was disagreed with. That had to be put to an end. But, but, but my issue is this, that, you know, this word Elohim comes from the Bible. Yes. There is um, possibly going to be some war over this in, in, in amongst the extraterrestrials, but amongst the... Uh, are, am I still with you? Yes. Okay, uh, I heard so. Uh, anyway, there there's, might be some serious disagreement between some of the authorities and some of the other people who are supposed to be our pals here. So all I'm saying is I, I don't have any problem with extraterrestrials being involved in the, in the, in the planning and, 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 and all that of the planet. But uh, the fact that, that the Raelian doctrine and, and, and such and, and information that I received, um, they ignore... Um, the parts of the Bible that doesn't agree with that view of, of the human being, you know, the humanist view. And uh, they, they ignore the creator, you know, like there was a creator before there was any stars or before there was anything, but, you know, in the beginning there was God. Okay? That, that's We're the translation of the, in English. Are you but saying that the Elohim were here before the first star was created, before the heavens and the earth were laid down? Uh, actually, w uh, in the origin, it, the Elohim didn't create the earth. They created everything that was on the earth, and and uh, the planets were there, and it. Uh huh. So so there was no, there was no before everything. Everything always was. There always is no will beginning. Be. That right. that's what the symbol I'm wearing is uh -huh. explaining. I know. Yeah. The it represents the. Uh, it represents infinity in time and space, right. and in the in the creations of human being in every level, there is no beginning, no end. Well, Christ Himself, Jesus, one of your one of one of your people who has been appointed by the by the Elohim, one of your people who has been raised, Himself is saying that God will be here after the last star is burned out, and you know, and He says, "I don't come to bring peace, but division," and He mm -hmm. says all of these other things. Now, yeah, uh, Je Jesus was sent by the Elohim. He was he was a prophet, like many of them, like Buddha, Muhammad, Joseph Smith. Well, About he doesn't seem to agree with anything you're saying here. Oh yes, we're saying the same thing. It's just that we. Um, go ahead. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, go because uh, Jesus, when he, s he talked to the people in this time, he couldn't talk the same way that Rael talks. But they were saying the same thing. But he was talking to primitive people. They couldn't understand, and when I say primitive, means with no scientific knowledge. So he couldn't say the same thing the same way that Rael is. Rael is here to demystify everything, to bring uh, the truth about our origin scientifically, which is different, but they're saying the same thing, because Jesus was, was one of them. He was uh, coming from an earthly woman, 
and, he was, and his father was one of them. So when he was talking about his father being in the sky, he was right because his father lives on another planet. And, um, and when he was saying that uh, he was talking about God, he was not talking about God, he was talking about Elohim, if you take the original Bible. Because, of course, if you take the, the, the Bible in, in English or French or whatever, uh, they talk about God because it has been translated like that. But it's, it's plural. It, Elohim, it's a plural because the singular is Eloha. And uh, if you take, when they say we created human beings on their, uh, they created human beings on their image, on their likeness, it's a plural. And they say that uh, we are like them, so they're human beings like us. They look like us and we look like them. When they came on this planet, they created seven laboratories where they created the seven different races, which is very important because we all come from them. Uh, whatever the color of your skin, you have been created by a group of Elohim on their image. means that on their planet, they have different races too. Not only white, not only black, not only uh, yellow, whatever, but it's, it's, it's differences, which is beautiful to be different and to respect the differences, you know, to respect the, 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 the philosophy of somebody else, it's very important. You know, I respect somebody who is Catholic because if it's what makes him happy, it's important. The most important thing is to be happy. That's the most important thing and to respect people. Okay, folks, we're visiting with Marie. Helen Parent. She is a Raelian priest from... You're living in Miami now, but you yes. were in... Montreal. I Montreal. come from Montreal, Quebec. And if you, I hope you all can understand her, her uh, accent. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> you let me know if you don't no, understand I'm doing it. I'm, I, I've got it down now. Yes. <laughs> okay, next caller. You're on the air, caller. Hi, Jeff. How are you doing? Good, and you? Hey, uh, I think that not the caller that just called in, but before that had to have been Alex. And uh, Alex <laughs> Jones, and it seems to me that Alex is calling up air. He gets to ranting on his show, then he gets on your show and rants, then he calls in on every show and rants and raves. And, uh, geez, that guy gets enough air time. You need, you know. Anyway, uh, Matt, young lady, uh, in regards to what you're uh, talking about here, doesn't the Bible say, the Bible says, Jesus said, I am the way the truth and the life no one comes to the father but through me and when you say that that the muhammad and buddha and these other prophets said the thing and uh, thing is jesus christ that's absolutely not correct because christ jesus christ uh these other prophets the other religions buddhism hinduism and everything uh the way to uh, the Godhead or the way to eternal salvation is through good works, through self-sacrifice, through mortification of the flesh. And the Christian, the true Christian religion, the way to, to salvation is through the death and, of G and shedding of blood of Jesus Christ. He paid the price for our sins. We were redeemed if we believe that and ask him to come in. And that has absolutely nothing to do with the other uh, thought systems of these other religions, these beliefs. Now, am I, what do you, what's your response to that? Well, we're in, <laughs> we're in the middle of pictures here, but go ahead. <laughs> well, you know, like I said a little bit earlier, every, um, uh, the prophet that they came, they're not, they were not seeing like the exact Thing the, the thing the same way because it was adapted to the people in those times and to the country where they were because Muhammad was a, in a different area that Jesus was so he had to be adapted to the people who were there and in the time that was done but they were all sent by the Elohim all the religion are have the same origin we all come from the Elohim so it's it's there is not a religion better than the other one it, it was just that at this particular time it was like G when anyway in in one epoch there is only one prophet that they sent there is never they never sent two prophets in the same time so when jesus came he was he was the uh, the only one in this time so everything that went through the elohim went through him and but don't forget that in the bible there is a lot of thing that um that 
are, are not uh, written properly because like for example the New Testament is, is the, the worst because the New Testament was written many many years after Jesus died nothing was written in the time of Jesus nothing at all it was like two three hundred years after and it was a tradition of word to word with people that couldn't understand anyth anything that they were saying and it was word to word for th almost 300 years and after they decided to write things. So can you imagine how deformed it, it could have been? It's like if you played the game of the telephone. We could do it here with four or five people and then you say one word and at the end it's completely different. And in a few seconds, so can you imagine in 300 years how it came up after? So. His message is, was a message of love, of having more love between each other. That's what the prophet, their mission was all about. So we could survive through the time and get to this age where we are now, which is the age of the revelation, the age of the apocalypse. We're very privileged to live in this time because we'll see everything. It's the most important time of the humanities now because the Elohim will come back with all those prophets. Everything will be understood. And, and it's going to be in this generation. We're going to see everything. And maybe you're going to be there, Jeff, <laughs> and be able to interview <laughs> the Elohim. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next caller, you're on the air. Hello. How you doing? Just fine, Jeff. How are you? Just doing all right. Hey, man, Alex is really, he's going off, dude. You need to get control of him. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. <laughs> uh, for some reason, that got disconnected. Next c er, caller, you're on the air. Yes. Hi. Hi. Um, I agree with the first um, three previous callers. Um, this religion, this lady is um, preaching, is none other than has been around since the time of Cain. It's a religion he started, and it's gone through Hinduism. And I mean, you know, Jesus Christ said he was the way, the truth, and the life, and um, he did not ever claim to be a prophet. He said that he was the son of God, which is different than these other prophets, uh, Mohammed and all of these others. They, uh, they had all their different religions. You can say it came to different people, to different places, different times throughout the world, but um, there was, if all of these other religions are correct, then everybody can... Um, do their own thing and uh, get to heaven, if you will, um, on their own merits or their own religion. But uh, Christ said that he was the only way. And uh, this was through the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. None of the others so-called prophets raised from the dead to, to prove what they were saying was true. And uh, there, there just is no other way. Um, you, you're, anything that is contrary to what he taught or what he believed is Antichrist, is the spirit of Antichrist. And um, there's Christ being meaning that uh, he was the anoint, anointed one of God. He is the Son of God. And if he is the Son of God, the Elohim, and yes, that is a plural word, and you can read that in Genesis right on through. It, it talks about all that, and it is one God. Okay, did you? Did you well, I answered that to? already. You did. Yes, that you know, if you take the real original Bible, n there you don't find the word God. You find Elohim, and um, there is other ways. I mean, Jesus was one of the prophet. The prophet means prophetess, which means the one who reveals. So. Jesus come here and reveal something. Muhammad was here and revealed something. And they were all sin. The, he was the only one in his time. That's what he was saying. I'm the only one now that is connected with the Elohim. But in the time of, of Muhammad, he was the only one then, prophet, that was sent by the Elohim. And uh, he was, uh, Jesus was the fruit like I said before, of an earthly woman and a man from there, uh, uh, Neloah. So he was uh, special in that way that they, for the first time, they created their prophet that way. And um, so that's why he was talking about his father in the sky, and uh, his father was, was an Eloah, 
was not, he, he, if he didn't say my, uh, my, that he was the son of, of God, because God doesn't exist in Hebrew, the word God, it's Elohim. And all our Bibles comes from Hebrew. That was written in Hebrew. Jesus was speaking Hebrew. He was not speaking English. So he was speaking this language. And in the, with the translation, a lot of mistake, and a lot of mistake too because of the oral tradition of what Jesus was saying. The most um, accurate writ written document that we can find, a little bit of in the Genesis and in the Kabbalah, which is uh, pretty good in, in accurate information in the Kabbalah. Okay, um, next caller, you're on the air. Hello, Jeff. How you doing? Uh, listen, ma'am, I, I agree with a lot of the things that uh, Mary's saying tonight. There's the only thing that concerns me is that, uh, you know, supposedly uh, if you read Revelations and you get off all into that end of it, you know, someone's going to come and supposedly have all the answers. And uh, it's also stated that even the most elect will be deceived. And uh, th I think that's the, that's the scary part of this deal. Okay. You with me? Yeah, yes, well. yes, yes. I mean, does that make any sense to you guys? I mean, uh, someone comes, they've got all the answers to our environmental problems. They've got our, mm -hmm. you know, they, they can solve it all, mm -hmm. but yet, who are these people? You know what I'm saying? Well, it was, it was announced that uh, in the time of the Revelation, in the time of the Apocalypse, they would send their last prophet, the paraclet, that they call it in the Bible, the one who will tell the truth. And uh, Raoul's book in French is called The Book Which Tells the Truth. And he is the last prophet that they send on this planet. Of course, it's hard to believe for most of us because we don't, why, why him? Why not me? Why not this person? But you need somebody to be that, that uh, messenger that will come. And um, he is the last one before they come back here. And he is the Messiah that the Jewish people are waiting for. He is the one who reveals everything, who, we, who has all the answer of what you're talking about. Well, I, I think what I'm talking about, and I don't want to get too uh, traditional, I'm just thinking Antichrist, you know. You know, I, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Antichrist means before Christ, and it was John, John the Baptist, because anti, if you, if you speak la Latin, means before. So Antichrist was before Christ. It means the one who announced Christ. Uh, we, it was John the Baptist that well, was the Antichrist. Oh, gosh. John the Baptist was Jesus' cousin, right? I mean, he he's was the, the one, one that who baptized who, Jesus. He was the one who prepared the welcoming of Jesus uh, before he came. Well, all I was all, all I was referring to is the fact that supposedly some of the you know the saints, the Christians, would be deceived by this miraculous uh, happening that you're referring to. I don't know. I never heard about that. It's in the Bible. Well, a lot, a lot of things in the Bible are, don't forget that a lot of things in the Bible were written, first of all, a long time after Jesus died, and the church had a lot, a lot of dogma many, many, many years after Jesus was, was gone. Right. Uh, the Virgin Mary, it's not a long time ago that they decided that she was virgin. Mm -hmm. I, it's not in the time of Jesus that she was declared virgin. I, it was a few hundred years ago by the church. Mm -hmm. So it has nothing to do with the message of Christ at all. Well, I don't know. It, it, you know like yeah, well, make some research and you'll, you'll find out. If you take the history of the Catholic Church, you'll see all the dogma where they went uh, voted and all the decision when the, 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 three, the Trinity was voted. Uh, all this was not in the time of Jesus. It was a lot, a lot of years after. And if you study that, you know, I realize I realize a lot of that was written hundreds of years later, like you're saying. Yes, and it was not the message of Jesus himself. Well, John, you know, was uh, exiled on Patmos, and he wrote a lot of that in Revelation. John, the the, the apostle. Oh, yes. None of the no, apostles. No, no, they're they're like two or three different Johns. John the Baptist. I think there's still some controversy over who John was of Patmos. But nothing was written in the, uh, by the Apostle after, because it's always saying 
according to John, according to Mark, according to Matthew. The one yes, one it's one the one tradition, one. the verbal tradition that they did was according to them, but they never wrote anything. The, the apostles that were with Jesus, nothing was written by them yeah. at all. Right. So what, it, I mean, uh, if it, okay, the Elohim, that's who you're saying this is. Yes. How does, okay, is Satan involved anywhere in this deal? Satan? Yes. Yeah, Satan was, uh, is, is an Eloah, he's living, he's an extraterrestrial, he's one of the Elohim. And he also uh, has a band of angels with him, does he not? Uh, the thing is that he's the one who was against the creation on this planet. Exactly. Like we answered earlier, that there was a party that was against this creation because he was saying that it was not successful and we were too aggressive he and we to should be destroyed. Right. We should be destroyed. So he's the one who, who passed tests to a lot of of the prophets, of, uh, of the great people we see in the Bible. He passed tests to them to prove, he wanted to prove to Yahweh, which is the president of the Elohim, that, that we were not good. So Satan, the devil, uh, is the same person, because devil comes from Diabolus, which, came, which means calumniator. That he was saying calumny, you, you can see this word in English, calumny, uh, uh, false things. Is it the word? No. Calumnia? Mm. Uh, so it's, it's, he was saying, like he was testing those people to see if they really, really love the creators. So he's the one who tried to prove that we shouldn't be um, deserved to live because we're not successful, we're too aggressive. And, and Lucifer was, um, it's another person, it's not the same person, is the president of, uh, it was the president on earth um, to to uh, regulate the the, the 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 creation in then because Lucifer means the light he was bringing the light and and uh, on this planet by creating people so if we are on this planet alive right now it it depends of Lucifer because he's the one who really defend us and talk for us and say that we're good and we we're gonna get better and we can it's gonna be successful and Yahweh is the president on that planet. Okay, next caller, you're on the air. Hi, this is Curtis. I wanted to talk to Miss Parent about a couple of things. Yes. I've, uh, I, w I watch your show that uh, y'all present every once in a while on Access. The uh, Oh, I guess it's a 30-minute, maybe even an hour-long show. And uh, there's a couple of things about it that I find kind of curious. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, after the Elohim come, or whatever's going to happen, are we all going to sport around in those robes like Rael wears? Rael doesn't wear a robe. He wears that white garment. This is him. This is this fellow mm, yes, right here. Yes, 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 yes. This is. Do you want to get a shit close up of this, or do you? Yeah, sure. Yeah, all right, we'll can get a, show. This is. This is. You claim this fellow then is what's he? What's his role in all? He's the. He's the last messenger sent by the Elohim, and his mission is to demystify and, and uh, explain scientifically the truth about our origin that all the prophets explained before but had to explain it uh, uh, adapted to the people on their time. Okay. Yeah. And people dress the way they want. I mean, uh, if somebody wants to wear a robe, it's, it's, it's their choice. But um, actually, right now, Ryle doesn't wear a robe. Uh, okay. Mm. Unless he's going out of his shower, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the other brief thing was about half the time when they zoom in you on your picture here, the UFO that's behind you, or the flying saucer, looks like a pair of horns coming out of your head. <laughs> so, you know, the connection with Satan there is pretty self explanatory. Yeah, it does, so. as we're looking at it, yeah. So, uh, you know, I hope everybody pays nice. attention to that. <laughs> so, it's good original. night. Thanks. Hey, uh, mm -hmm. that is uh, that is a lot of work for that drawing. Yes. Uh, whether anybody agrees with it or not, or you know, but I'm just saying it is a it is a lot of work in the drawing. Okay, next caller, you're on the air. Uh, hi. Hi. Happy New Year. Thank you. Uh, so, basically, your religion, I guess it's a religion, is yes. uh, basically just total anti-Bible, because you know the Bible wasn't written after Jesus. In fact, most of it was written 4,000 years before him, when Moses was there. That's when most of the Old Testament started being written, mm -hmm. you know, past that time. 
and there was, you know, lots of prophets living together at the same time. People used to prophesize in groups. None of them mentioned anything you're talking about. All the prophecies in the Bible led up to Jesus and Jesus coming back. You know, even Muhammad, none of that stuff was in the Bible. Jesus was the last one, and he's coming back to take over the earth. So uh, so the, the only point I'm trying to make is if, if you're saying something different, then it's, you know, it, it's not harmonious with what the Bible is saying. So you you basically have a religion that was written by that guy. Is that true? I mean, who, who defined... I saw one of your shows on TV here where they were all sitting around a table eating dinner, and they said, you go to Earth and go do this, and they zapped them off the picture, and they went flying to the Earth. Who wrote that? Who decided that that's what was happening? I don't, I don't remember that. Uh, well, that there, there was, was a, there's a show on one of these channels where all the Elohims are sitting around eating, and they all had blonde hair. She probably didn't get a chance to see that. She's not even. She's living in my Florida. Well, e even the uh, all the That's stuff you're all the stuff you're yeah. talking about. No, it's something else that has nothing to do with us. Um, Jesus in the Bible announced that there's going to be somebody else after him that will come to tell the truth. And if you real you read your Bible properly, he didn't say he was the last one. He announced somebody else. The okay. paraclet is called the paraclet. The, the, and other, he the will other point is, I basically think Lucifer is a dork. For one. Well, you okay? Hi. Hello. Hi. Um, uh, yeah, there are people on this planet who are still faithful to Yahweh. I'd say that Jesus was uh, his son, and uh, and I think that. Uh, First will come, uh, and if anybody was the paraclet or whatever you're saying, I think it was Mohammed. Uh, and see, he talks of the Antichrist too. And he talks about these times and one coming first who is a great deceiver, uh, abomination of desolation, standing on Mount Zion and proclaiming himself God. Okay? Now, Yahweh and, uh, you know, is, is, is faithful to his people. He never has wanted to destroy his people. There is a war going on. It's going on here on earth and up in heaven. And, and basically, Yahweh's dudes are coming to kick some butt and take some names. And we're going to see it all happen here not too, not too far in the future. I have to see, that's kind of where I... See, I, my, my position is on all this, Marie Ellen. Is yes, that, Is that the Antichrist forces are in complete control of this world right now. Well... The, what's in it is so in anybody, control so of this anybody, so anybody that's 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 righteous uh, on any on, on on any front is 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 you know they're 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 the mi I think they're very much the minority yeah I think what what um, the the responsibility that this war doesn't go well it's not on any force outside of ourselves we create everything which is uh, on this planet the human being the society we are responsible for the mess we are in. Nobody else. There is no antichrist coming and, and doing that to us. We are responsible. I think it's the first step. We well, let me ask you, you you've talked about the, these bankers, these world bankers. Mm -hmm. now, uh, they are, they are res now, maybe the people are, are responsible for the fact that they have allowed themselves to fall victim to them. But the fact is, these people, these ones that create and finance mm -hmm. wars and whatnot, they are, in, in fact, perpetrators perpetrating their system. Yeah, but, is, but they're human beings. They're human beings yes, like you and me. Yes, they're human beings, but they're, but they're still, I mean, whatever uh, religion they would, uh, I mean, you're, you're talking about wicked people here. Yes, there is wicked people everywhere. But the wicked people, don't forget, we are responsible for that. The humanity created those people. Hitler, as an example, is the, the result of a whole humanity, uh, a thinking of a whole humanity. We, um, the events create the man. It's not the man that creates the event. Uh, with all that we, we do, we create those people. With the education that we give to our children, the value that we give to our children, we are responsible. Uh, we cannot put the blame only on the people who are bad and do bad things because we are responsible in a way of the way they are, all of us. No, I agree with all that. of us. I agree with that. You know, it's uh, very easy to point words, the, to point the finger. Be, 
wouldn't be ruling over no. us doing this stuff if if, if, if we they were, would have had a good education or if we would have kept them in line uh, yes well <laughs> sure s anything but i mean we were uh, especially like like uh, hitler had a mother and a father which kind of education he had to be that kind of evil person uh, it's just an example but he got an education that brought him to be like that so we are responsible we are responsible to let movies that are aggressive to be on TV that will engender aggressive people later, maybe another Hitler. We are responsible of that. It's too easy to point out the finger and say it's his fault. It's all our fault. And we have part to play in this humanity to make it better. It's too easy to sit back and say, well, it's the Antichrist who does everything bad. I'm not doing anything bad. But are you doing something good? Are you bringing something good in this humanity? What do you do? What, what do we, each of us do to bring something good, positive to this humanity? It's too easy to say it's the fault of the society, it's the fault of the government. It's, it's all our fault. We are responsible for our, res for our happiness, we are responsible for our sadness, we are responsible for all the emotion we have for what's happening in our life, a hundred percent. Okay, um, we're visiting, in case you just join us, we're visiting, visiting with uh, Marie Helen Parent. Yes, Jeff. Hey. <laughs> you she got it. She's a Raelian priest. And um, next caller, you're on the air. Hello. Hello? Hello. Hi. Uh, yes, I wanted to thank Alex for calling in tonight. I 100% agree with his point of view. I do feel that this is a total diversion to what we are trying to accomplish with this program. And uh, that's about all I have to say. What, what do you try to accomplish with this program, well, Jeff? Tell me. Basically, we would, we would classify this program as what, what some would label as a patriot program, meaning that, uh, that we don't want to sacrifice the United States of America to a, for a, to a new world order, uh -huh. meaning we don't want to give up U.S. sovereignty to a World Trade Organization, yeah, to the yeah. United Nations, uh -huh. to these, what I would call, inter the, the, the people who control this system, they're mm -hmm. different front organizations. So I so fit right in. You fit? <laughs> yes, because ah. I don't agree. I, I agree with you. You don't, you don't, it's okay, well then there you go. That's, that's yes. a, you, 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 you don't support that either then, right? No. Okay. Yeah. Nope. Then. Next caller, you're on the air. Hello. Hi. Yeah, I I just wanted to say that um, either this lady is extremely ignorant about. Well, do you mind? Do you mind uh, these types of calls or? Well, we really don't need personal ones. So. Well, well, it's a I'm, lack of respect. I'm not trying to be personal, but it's it's either got to be uh, ignorance or the lady is outright liar, because some of the things she said, um, like um, the spirit of Antichrist, um, which is alive and well in the world, it has been for a number of years. Um, she says it means before Christ. Well. Scripture is plainly uh, shows that it, it that's not what the meaning of it is. It's instead of Christ, and any spirit that's um, trying to um, preach any other gospel other than Jesus Christ is the spirit of Antichrist, and it's uh, talked about in the last days in Revelation, uh, Antichrist, and and all of these um, teachings that'll be common in the last days and. And as far as um, these extraterrestrials and everything, this is a very popular um, thing in this day, especially. And um, people are looking for answers to the world's problems and the world, new world order, and all this and that. And um, this, these are not answers. These are these are not truths. These are lies. But ask me a question. People. I can give you answer because okay. since I'm here, everybody talk about antichrist, and they go on and on and on. But ask me any question, and maybe I can give you the answer that are in the book, it, which is a very uh, full of, well, of answers that I didn't give uh, maybe a hun just a little, little tiny pieces tonight, because it depends on the question I have. Well, it's, 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 not all, a question. it's always the same question, the it's, same statement. Yeah, it's not a question. It's the statement you're making 
that are not true and I'm just trying to bring out um, the other side um, uh, of what the scripture says because um, the things you're saying are not true um, you said that there's someone coming later that is going to tell us the truth yes well that denotes or that indi uh, intimates that um, Jesus Christ was a liar because he said I am the truth he was the truth for his time and when he, he was said, talking, yes, and but, but he, he's not a liar. He and he announced, said, he announced the he the, the, the he, he announced that somebody else after him will come to tell the truth, and I I cannot state the but the, the place in the Bible where it said. But if you read the Bible, you're going to read that. I know the Bible. Well, read it again because it's written in the Bible. It is yeah. called the Paraclet. He said that he. There will be another. He said yes. there will be another that will yes. come in his own name. And he will tell the truth. And the people truth. would believe him. And I'm going to tell you a little but bit more. But he didn't say he would tell the truth. He said it would be a lie. No, 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 no. He, he said uh, this person will come and his name is, he would be the paraclet that will bring the truth and the mystery of God will be over. It's written exactly like this in the Bible. Yeah, I know what it's written like. Yes. And so... To the militia. But Next he said question, that there would be a strong <laughs> delusion that would come upon the people and that they would, they would choose to believe a lie rather than the truth. And, and Maybe you are living in a lie. <laughs> no, I, I know the truth. I know Jesus Christ. You were there when he was here? You listened to him? I'm here now and he's still here. See, he said he was from the beginning. And uh, Jesus wasn't just for that time that he walked on the planet. Um, he said he was in the beginning and he will be in the end. I mean, he's always been Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yeah, because he's eternal. He, he lives on the planet of the Elohim. He's kept uh, alive uh, with the scientific. That's how Jesus we, is that's how we can be alive. Uh, it's the, the, the Elohim has that, that scientific knowledge that with cloning, it's, that's something we can understand because we know how it works. To take one cell of your body, you, tan, you can recreate the, the, uh, the entire personality and, and body of, of well, this Jesus person. Well, Jesus is part of the Elohim. And that's how they, ca they keep all the prophets alive, eternal on their planet, by uh, this scientific um, uh, ex uh, knowledge that they have. And if you deserve to be recreated when you die, if you deserve eternity with the la after the last judgment, that's how they keep you alive, scientifically. Because when you die, uh, there is no... Um, because the soul, the people that call the soul that people have, is the DNA. Uh, we are made, Jesus was saying, that we are made of dust, uh, of a handful of dust, and we're going to go back to dust. What he meant is that the way we are created, uh, we are created from inert matter from the earth with the DNA, which is matter too, but that matter has a specific um, function that it's like it creates blueprints of the inner matter and that's what makes you blue eyes, uh, beautiful, gorgeous man, and all this. That's what the, 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 the DNA is all about. Well, if the DNA <laughs> is the soul, well, I'm really not going to refute any of <laughs> If the DNA is so the soul, that's the soul. Said, that, that's the soul of human being. But when you die, this DNA is programmed in itself to it, it pro it's programmed to organize the unorganized matter. And after a certain time, like we are programmed to live about 100, 120 years old if we would be healthy. After that, the matter goes back to the unorganized state in in the earth, and that's it. So you are alive for a short period of time. You become aware of the infinity. You are infinity becoming aware of yourself. That's what life is all about, that little period of time. And if the science do something about it, then you were created and you can be eternal if you deserve it, like in the last judgment, it's what it's written. And you, we are followed all our life. We know, the Elohim knows, they, they listen to us right now, they know well, they're probably not sitting there and listening, but they know, they can know what we're talking, they can know what you're thinking, what I'm thinking, they know everything for every human being on this planet, because we have different vibe, different vibration, and in those vibration, all we think, all we do, are, is coded in those waves. 
and they have a kind of a big computer. I, I, I try to explain in very simple words so we can all understand. They have like big computers and kept all those vibrations from everybody and they know everything of, of a person from when he's born until he dies. And then they can judge if that person deserves to be recreated. What's your opinion on the, the uh, organized religion then? I mean, do you like have like the big religion, like Catholicism, Baptism, mm -hmm. uh, it it all comes from the same place. Like I said, and a religion religion means it's it's important to study etymology, to understand what a word means. And uh, religion comes from religare, the Latin word, which means a link, a link between the people and a link with your creator, and and to have a link between the people. It's important to be organized. Like, if you want to achieve a goal, like for the Raelians, as an example, the Raelian Church, it's it's if we all believe in it, but we're all over the place without organizing to have a, an interview tonight with you, nothing will happen. We will never, never build an embassy if we're not organized to 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 do it. We have to put our our strength together to achieve our goal. And we want to change the whole planet. We want to make this world a better world. It's a big task, very big task. So it's important that we are working together as a team towards the same direction. And the Catholic did the same thing with, with the word of Jesus. You know, they built a huge, huge, huge church. They succeeded their mission, but they had to get organized to get there. I had to do this. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, okay. Um, next caller, you're on here. Um, <laughs> I, I get I get criticized. Probably Hello. You <laughs> You're on the air, caller. Hello. Hi. I have a question. Uh, um, when you were talking about building the embassy in Jerusalem, is that? Can you hear me? Yes, yes I do. Yes. Um, well, you were just answering some of my questions, but you're going to get organized to build the embassy in Jerusalem, right? Or and near Jerusalem? Or it depends how. Israel will react if they accept to give a land with extraterritoriality where we can build that embassy. But it, it's it's destined to happen according to you, right? It's yes, it will happen. It might not be in Jerusalem or near Jerusalem. It might be something else, somewhere else, depending on the reaction of the people from Israel. Uh, okay. My next question is: If when they do come, and not everybody accepts them or whatever, they turn away from them. What's going to happen to those people that don't believe in them or, or refuse to, do they want us to follow them then or, or what, what do they want from us after that, after they come and meet us? They don't want anything from us. Uh, they love us. They are parents from space. They created us. We are their children. They want the best for us. They want to come because we, we, are, we have something to have from them. They have nothing to have from us. Right. We have everything to learn from them. We have the, the scientific advance they have, we can have from them, their wisdom. We can learn so much from them. If they come, it's because they want to give us a gift. They, they don't expect anything from us. Okay. And, and when they come, a lot, a lot of people who are not ready for this will uh, go into big trauma because um, it, it's going to be a big chain and, and that's why it's important. That's why they, they appear all the time everywhere. Uh, it says in the Bible that in the time of revelation of the apocalypse, there will be a lot of sign in the sky right. and the sign in the sky is the apparition of UFO everywhere. So they can, the, the population can be prepared to that because it's going to be a big shock when they come, big, big shock. Right. And, and uh, we have to be prepared mentally and physically to have a place for them. And, and what we want is that we spread this message as much as we can everywhere because we want at least people know about it. Don't mm -hmm. have to agree, but you'll know. And when they come, you say, ah, I remember. Mm -hmm. I heard it. Right. And I thought it was crazy. I thought it was yeah, quite interesting. But you had an opinion, but one day you will have the fact because they will come. Okay. Did, you also, did I understand you to also say that the Raelians, they believe in a last judgment? Yes. And are the Elohim going to be the one to, to judge everyone? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Well, that was yes, because uh, they won't recreate somebody who is miserable, who don't have fun. 
who don't like life. Why would it would be a torture for that person to recreate him for eternity, to be miserable for eternity? That's one thing. Nobody can fault me for <laughs> saying that I don't have, get enough fun in my life. Maybe, maybe I'm one of them. <laughs> You're on the air, caller. Hey, we're having fun. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, how y'all doing? Good, you? Hi. I'm uh, doing pretty good. Uh, have you ever seen an alien? Uh, You're to talking to Jeff now, huh? No, I'm talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've never seen one, so. Well, no, I haven't. You, you haven't? So you're kind of taking Rail, is that his name? Uh, Rail. Rail. You're taking his word on it, right? Well, it's you really have to read the book to to understand that what his messages are very, very uh, logical and make you understand things. And it's like a big, it's like if my life was, if I take my example, was like a big puzzle, a lot of pieces everywhere. And when I read the message, it put everything together. It, it, it like makes sense for once in my life. It makes, everything makes sense. Everything in my life makes sense because of this. So it's not like I take his word and I believe and I don't understand. When I read the book, when I read the book and I, all the radians who read the book, they, uh, it's like all of a sudden you understand something and it's, in, it's inside. It's, it's something that lives there. It's like if the message were there even before I read the book. And when I read the book, I recognized it. It was there already. And uh, I don't need to see extraterrestrial or aliens to understand that there is no way in this universe that we can be alone. Uh, it's impossible. It's, it's infinite. It would be very, very uh, looking at our belly button to see that we are the only one in this universe. There is a, uh, an infinity of... of an, and for me, it makes sense to... Before Rael's messages, there was two possibilities of how we came on this planet. Only two. God sitting on a cloud with his magic stick and created everything in six days. Does it make sense to you? And then the evolution that we come from a monkey, that, uh, that uh, our grandfather is a monkey, that we uh, evolve and with everything that there is in nature. I live in a place where there is a lot of, of nature and butterflies. And you see uh, Donna has at her place a peacock. You call it peacock? It is so beautiful. The color, how can evolution create something like that? Impossible. You can put letters in a bag and shake it for millions of years. It will never make a dictionary. Never. It, it's, it, it's, it doesn't happen like this. So that was the two possibility. Okay. Doesn't make sense. And now there is this third possibility that we have been created by human being like us in laboratory, scientifically with the DNA that for me, that made so much sense, a lot more than those two possibilities. Well, who created these people that, uh, that created Finally, these? a good question. Uh, <laughs> well, I haven't studied this subject very much, I have to admit that. <laughs> 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 so then who created these, these people? The Elohim were created by another races from another planet, and it's the eternal cycle of creation. They were created by other human beings, they created us, and soon we will create other human beings on another planet somewhere. It's, it's in our gene to perpetuate life in the universe. We, like a virus, want to, to perpetuate our lives everywhere in this big being, and it's, it's in ourself. There is no beginning. It's very hard to conceive that and understand that because we think always that there is a beginning. But if you think that there is a beginning, means that somebody that comes from nothing, like, like nothing were there, the, the Mr. Nothing was there, because if he's something, he, he, there is matter, and he, that matter come from somewhere, has to be a beginning. But if there is a beginning, means that something were created from nothing. It's impossible means that the matter always existed. Because it's, it, for me, it's less uh, trub to, uh, trouble in my mind to think that there is a beginning, but because it's, an, it's impossible to think there is a beginning. When you make a cake, you cannot make a cake without flour, without this and this and this. You need ingredients, you need matter to, to create something. And to create human beings, you need matter. And where that matter comes from, 
if you imagine that there is a beginning of it, it means that it has been created from nothing. So there is no beginning. We come from human beings, and those human beings come from other human beings eternally. That's the infinity, that's what the symbol represents, the infinity in cycle, in time and space. Mar Mar Marie Helen Tyrant? I, I, I'm going to get <laughs> We're wrapping, we have to wrap this up. I want to, first off, I want to just ask you, how do you, what do you got to do to become a Raelian priest? You got to go through some co some course or something, or how do you become a certified Raelian priest? Uh, well, y we have seminars. Because uh, I know you have a little entourage with you here today. Are these people also vying to be Raelian priests, or are they under your study, or? Uh, there is a uh, there is different uh, stage, and um, I know uh, Donna is a level three, which is assistant guide, and uh, uh, it's by attending a lot of seminars and and uh, growing, awakening your consciousness. And Rael chooses is, is priest and his bishop. This to, fellow to work is still alive. Yes. Okay. Yes, he's alive. Yeah. And fi finally, do you all have a number or? or P.O. box or something you'd like to get? Yes, get mentioned the phone here. number is. Are we ready? Yeah, it's on TV. No, no, no it's yours, Jeff, no, that's isn't it? The television. <laughs> you okay, wh what's your four number? 473. 473. 7115. 7115. Yeah, it's going to be written on the screen. It's a voicemail, so please leave your, uh, your um, phone number. We will call you uh, back. Uh, and uh, I think they will put yeah, on the screen. Well. Yeah, they will put on the screen all the um, the because I'm here to give lectures all week in the libraries, and uh, the first one will be tomorrow night. And um, I think they were supposed to put that on the screen. I don't exactly know where it is. Um, uh, it's in my purse actually somewhere. <laughs> but um, they're gonna write it down uh, before the end where it's gonna be. And uh, then we're going to show a video. We will answer more questions. We can um, discuss. You mean at about your seminar? Or your uh, for the lecture here this week, we're going to have. And on Sunday. Where's the one that you had so you were, were, Okay. Are they, I guess they're going to put up slate on it. Yes. Outside. And Sunday, this Sunday coming up, we will have uh, on Sunday morning, we're going to have a meditation. Uh, I will guide a meditation to teach people how the central meditation is done. So. For the one who are interested to to know what is uh, the central meditation, they are welcome to come. Everything's free. Could you tell uh, Donna to uh, to bring Linda? Could you tell Donna to bring the the poster sure. with uh, the to I, because I don't okay, know which right library. The number. Yes, wonderful. Thank you, Mike. Okay, there's the number yes. there for. Uh, Yes. Now that, that's the uh, lo kind of local coordinator for the Raelian movement. Yes, Donna. Here. It's Donna Grebo okay. that answered those uh, calls. And tomorrow night uh, at 7 o'clock, it's at the Pleasant Hill Library in uh, Austin. And then on Thursday, 7 o'clock, Little Walnut Creek Library in Austin, too. And Saturday at 12.30, it's going to be at the Austin History Center, 810 Guadalupe Street. So if you didn't have time to catch all this, you can always call at the number you just saw. And, um, and uh, for the people who want information, we are on the, the internet. So it's, uh, you have to help me in English. I don't know how no, to I'm say that. I don't, I'm, about a, I'm a metal major on this. <laughs> HTTP, I guess anybody that knows computers knows that. And then that semicolon slash slash www dot R A E L for rail yes dot O R G yes and if you bruise on the internet you can even just write railian R A E L I A N and all the the page will will appear to you and you have more information of what it's all about. We can get the number up. Okay, right there's the number. Is that is that the right number, Donna? That's the right number. Is it there. the right number? That's my number, yes. yes. That's the number for information on these seminars or anything else? Yeah, free, Four s free library lectures this week. Okay, 473-7115. Uh, uh, I've got to admit it's been very fun. You said it would be fun and it's been fun. Yes, I'm I glad you you're happy. I didn't know you were as cute as they were, though. <laughs> <laughs> Go 
go ahead, if you will. First off, I want to thank you for being on the program. I want to thank you to welcome me I really here. do appreciate you coming yeah. on. Thank you. Uh, go ahead, and if you would, just, just give a, a, a closing comment or something, anything that, that you haven't said that you'd like to say. Uh, go ahead, and if you would, just tell well, the I'd like viewers out there. Yeah, you. I'd like just to invite people to, uh, to open up more on, on, on everything in life because we have been educated, we have been programmed, and how much of you is you? I think it's, it's the question. Is it because you have been programmed and educated to believe in a certain tradition and values that it is what you are really and what, what's good for you? So just, I don't think it would hurt anybody just to open up and have a, a, a newer look on everything and try to learn, try, try to, to to put your hands on everything new and make your mind work and you'll see that you'll find new things and you'll discover new things about yourself that you didn't know before and uh, you're all welcome to come and meet me at those lectures this week and uh, it's going to be a pleasure for me to answer your question as much as I can and uh, on Sunday morning if you want to come meditate uh, then it's it's very good to learn to be in harmony with yourself and others. I made this for you, Jeff. Oh. Thanks for having us on the show. Thank you very much. Uh, I yeah. just was presented with something. I don't know what it is, but I. What it's a symbol. It? She okay, does what, that. What is that exactly? Is that, is That's that? a symbol of infinity. Oh. Where a little bird and a little UFO here. And you can hang it on your wall with a hook on yeah. the wall. Yeah. yeah. Well, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. <laughs> I always like to receive things. I got an autograph. <laughs> A picture of John Wayne about two months back. Wow. Well, it wasn't John Wayne himself, but it was a friend of John Wayne's who gave. And he gave it to you? Anyway, appreciate that, John. Okay. Uh, anyway, I hate to. Actually, if, you, if you're back in town, let, give us a call and we'll see about getting yes. you back on. Yes. Yes, maybe uh, next year I'll come back. Yeah. But I try to come when it's. Warmer. Yeah. It's too cold. It's freezing. Yeah, it is. La 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 la. Yes. Again, I do. <laughs> Hello, folks. Thanks. This is Mike Hansen, your good old YouTube video buddy. And we got a new YouTube channel. It's Hansen Archives. H A N S O N. And we got a new one coming out Waco Archives. Be sure to hit that subscribe button right now. And if you'd like, to write us to help out with this project uh, she's going to throw the address up right now for you all right and if you like to call us 830-672-3089 go ahead and tell them look at this little puppy tell them to subscribe say subscribe all right folks god bless I tell you what,